it's my discordant darlings, it's CK, back with her first story time and a roleplay related one at that. This was going to be a very different video, but I decided in the spur of the moment that this would be the topic, communication. Because not only is it important in roleplay, but it's important in life, and not a lot of people do it. This, this is going to be a long video. Some of it's going to be a little ranty, some of it's going to be extremely ranty, some of it's just going to be talking and explaining, but almost all of it will be laden with drama. So if you like listening to the dumpster fire that is humanity, or you're someone who rubbernecks at a car wreck as you pass by, well, listen on. So, apparently, I am the cause of all drama in one of the new rooms I play in. Not either of my home rooms. I'm actually pretty awesome there, and the only drama I tend to start there is in character. Unless someone doesn't happen to like my opinion, in which case, whatever, we can argue. Doesn't mean I don't like you. But I'll offer a bit of background. First, I won't get into it too deeply, but I was dating this guy who's polyamorous and came preloaded with an exclusively online girlfriend. So we started dating and I was the real life girlfriend. So it was more like a long distance relationship up until about two weeks before this situation because we lived in different states. Talked about visiting each other, the whole shebang. So, one day, a few after New Year's Day, I opted to pop into this room that my boyfriend had taken up playing in, and was run by someone I considered at least a pleasant acquaintance and possibly a casual friend. I am a curious person. Seriously? Cat? Kitty? There's a reason. Now, they have a Rose Wilson and a Grant Wilson player, and apparently Grant's story is that he's looking for his mother, Adeline Kane Wilson. Deathstroke's ex-wife. Now, I play Addie in DCN, DC Noir. She's not a huge sought-after character. In fact, most people probably have no bloody clue who she is. Anyway, so both Wilson children players urged me to pick up Adeline in the room. I was a little uncomfortable with the idea initially because I had Addie in DCN, but I decided, fuck it, I can do something different with her in this place. So I picked her up. While I was doing that, I noticed that my boyfriend also had Superman. Now, about a year ago, prior to this, I was, well, well, I was bitching rather vehemently about the Superman who plays in DC Noir to my boyfriend. He's an excellent Superman and the player is a doll, but the boy has a bad tendency to stick his foot in Clark's mouth when it comes to Lois. For a time, he broke my Lois in a way that required the Flash to fix it. If you know anything about DC Comics, you know it's pretty bad when you need the Flash to come in and course correct. At that time, my boyfriend had mentioned that he wished we could play Lois and Clark because he would pick up on the cues and stuff that I had basically gotten to the point of having to lay out for this Superman player to actually pick up. With that in mind, I tentatively grabbed Lois Lane because I wasn't about to just grab her and be like, you're stuck with me whether you like it or not. I'm not that type of player. Anyway, I approached him and asked him his opinion about it, and this is how the conversation went. I asked, how do you feel about my deciding to pick up characters in Worlds Collide? He said, perfectly fine, and even excited about it. Kind of giggly happy, which made me smile some. He then added, especially if you pick up Lois, whistles. When I said, I did, he said, and I quote, WOOT in capital letters. So yeah, I'd say he was pretty on board with the idea. Now, before we got to play the first time, I needed to know where we were starting. So I told him that I'd really like to start out with the world's finest thing because I had managed to draw a Batman player into the room. So, like, I thought it would be neat to play Superman and Batman finding out who the other is in some sort of fun hijinks type way. Whether it's from the animated series mini-movie or the Superman Batman annual number one, which has them stuck sharing a room on a cruise ship, which was great. But he said he didn't want to do that yet. Yet. Fair. Though at the time I didn't realize that this was completely contradictory to how Wonder Woman was being played. I don't think he did either. And playing a world's finest thing would have worked out a bit better to be closer to her timeline. So I asked my boyfriend where he wanted to start and he said probably he should start later, but obviously not knowing Bruce and Diana's real name later given the state of the room, so he couldn't do what he wanted to do, which was start fresh. Now, being the loving, doting, supportive girlfriend and friend that I try my damnedest to be, I asked, why not? I didn't pressure him into it. 
but offered possible ideas as to how he could do what he wanted to do with the character. So we played and no one made anything of it at that point. Now comes the fun part. The Batman player? Yeah, he's an old friend I got back in touch with. Like, really old. He started role-playing online a few years after I did, and not too long after our main characters were married. Even after we lost touch, any time I saw him use a name I remembered, I'd go in and try to touch base with him, like, Oh my god, there's Meridius! Must chat! It's been forever! I was a little extra in my excitement. <laughs> We'd catch up, lose touch again, then the cycle would repeat every couple years. Well, this time I found him in the big slice, listening to music, and I had just, within the last year or so, found out that this new name was actually his. Which, you could have knocked me over with a feather all this time and I could have caught up? Anyway, so we get to talking and he invites me to play in his new room, which is actually the Vampire Diaries slash Originals room, Monaco. And I invited him to come play in DC Noir. Now, at first, there was understandable hesitation, given some things that had happened. So, while I was twisting his arm, so to speak, I invited him to come play in Worlds Collide, where I'd picked up Lois and Adeline. Oh, and Harley, because I have only met one other player I would trust with Harley Quinn, and not feel sick to my stomach over. So, yeah. Anyway. I brought him in there so he could play Batman, because he and I had pretty similar beliefs when it came to Batman. That he loved Talia al Ghul, but situations kept them apart. The way he put it, Tali is the wife and Catwoman is the mistress. Which kind of makes it funny with her running from the altar in a whole you can't turn a hoe into a housewife way. But I love Catwoman too. Quite frankly, it's really hard to pick between Talia and Catwoman for me. And Batman and Catwoman's flirty cat and mouse dynamic, love it. So no hate for Catwoman. I could be a little biased, but I loved Talia with Bruce. The player did end up picking up Lex Luthor and Owlman in DC Noir, but now that that tangent's over, after he joined Worlds Collide, he convinced another player from his room to come in who happened to pick up Joker. So that was convenient for me, because now I have a Joker player too. Awesome! I actually had a really good one in DC Noir, but he stopped coming online and I haven't had a good one since, sadly. So we started playing some after he asked me where Superman was being played in his story, I told him where my boyfriend had chosen to play him from, the beginning, and he said he'd work with that, which would put Batman to being a vigilante for two years and two years in as Batman. I could work with that. Anyway, when stuff went down, I was about to play storyteller for a scene for his Batman to do some detective work. He has some history with the online girlfriend too, I don't know, hasn't been divulged. Anyway, about two weeks prior to this, boyfriend and I broke up. It was mutual, we're friendly still, and it was actually probably the most awesome breakup I've ever had except for this one where I actually set my ex up with a friend of mine who was a much better fit. Last I saw, they were still together, so yay, Cupid points! Or would that be Psyche points? Because Aphrodite's too full of herself and people loving her. Anyway. So, the online girlfriend has been playing Wonder Woman in this room since before any of us, and has her own established storyline. Now, regardless of anyone who might pick up the other two characters, she has been playing like the Justice League exists and the Trinity knows each other's names. Batman's player said to me that he didn't want anyone knowing Batman was Bruce Wayne, and I had Superman's player who had told me that he essentially didn't want his Clark to be aware of Bruce's identity yet, which would imply that neither would likely know her either. Anyway, the other night was when the communication failures, well, they didn't happen then, they just kind of came to a head apparently. So, the conversation in the room is as follows. I am not leaving these up long enough for you to read at regular speed. If you want to read the posts, pause and read. I will leave them on screen long enough for you to do so. Now, for someone who has shown as yet no interest in interacting with either Superman or Wonder Woman to suddenly be told, oh hey, he's going to get a note from Wonder Woman saying, hi, I'm here too, and that she's just going to go with whatever she likes, cause lol, then to have the room controller, rather than being a neutral party to mediate, actually sides with one person showing obvious favoritism, yeah, in my opinion, the people who run a room, short of obvious, extreme situations of harassment where no quarter can be had, should do their best to remain neutral and attempt to find a solution to problems that pop up, so they work for everyone involved. 
For this to happen to someone I had to convince to come into a room who has anxiety issues, yeah, I don't blame him for his reaction. Now, I will preface, well, I guess add context, if someone's going to be picking up Superboy or Robin or someone directly tied to one character's mythos, then yes, they should probably talk to the player of that character. But if someone picks up a character that only indirectly is tied to another character through crossovers rather than their own titles, then up until those characters have players, so you know how they want to play it, it would be considerate just to not acknowledge their existence. Now, Superman's player, knowing how he is, is very laid back. He doesn't care. He's a roll with the punches type of person. He doesn't care as long as it's fun. So Wonder Woman knowing his name is probably something that doesn't even blip in his radar, other than the fact that he really didn't want to start off with the world's finest type thing and didn't want to even know Batman's real name. Batman's player, on the other hand, you know, as I say this, I realize that the two players are kind of reflective of their parts. <laughs> I mean, temperament-wise, anyway. Anyway. Oh, this is great. So... After he left, I talked to him, dragged in Joker's player to try to draw him back into the room, convince him to give it another shot. He was worried about it looking like he was coming back with hat in hand, and both of us were kind of like, you've got no reason to apologize. I, on the other hand, kind of do. I probably shouldn't have piped up. I have impulse control problems. Sometimes comments get typed and I hit enter before I realize what's been said, especially when they're really short. Everything beyond the first comment, however, was totally premeditated, so no excuse for those except maybe PMS making me a little more reactive than I normally am. Anyway, so after a lot of talking with Joker's player taking a brief stab at trying to get me to leave the room with them, like totally just bail by showing me the room controller calling me out to him about how I have a lot of characters that I quote unquote sit on and basically saying that I'm the whole reason that the room started with character limits. Suffice it to say, that got me a good head of steam to rant on. One, I am a room moderator in DC Noir. I also storytell for people. I'll also pick up characters to play off of others because they want someone to play them sometimes. I almost did the same thing for her, except that she had so many particulars about how this character was supposed to be played that she had created that I just couldn't do it. It did not allow me enough room for expansion into a three-dimensional personality. Now, I have three lanterns. Two of them are holdovers from when we did Blackest Night. Those would be Indigo 1 and Dexstar. As you can imagine, anyone who knows DC Comics, those two aren't the types you play every day, and sadly, nothing really happens in space. The only character I have in DC that anyone who comes in might want is Harley Quinn. Maybe Rogue, but mostly Harley Quinn. Seriously, she is the only one I've been approached about anyone else wanting. In DC Noir, I have Lois Lane, Adeline Kane Wilson, Talia Al Ghul, Jesse Quick, the Queen of Fables for a storyline I'm doing, Cersei, the actual evil man-hating Cersei. There's a story there for another time. Anyway, most of my claimed characters aren't heroes. They're side characters that, at best, most people would NPC in their stories because they live relatively mundane lives, which I don't have a problem with. I mean, in the case of Talia, well, she can be a hard character to figure out stuff for. Yes, I have a lot of characters that almost no one wants. Oh my god, I'm holding on to such vital figures, such as Jessie Quick. The only reason anyone would even know about her at this point is because of Flash the TV show. Okay, so maybe this still bugs me. Especially since I'm hardly the worst one, and she's a bit of a hypocrite in that respect. As she has sat on characters, the guy who helps her with the room, who I hooked her up with roleplay-wise so they could play with each other, so he could get play with someone other than me, and she could have someone who'd be reliable to play with and not flake on her, also has admitted to sitting on characters himself. Yeah, I'm such a bitch, right? Anyway... That's going to be said a lot in this video. <laughs> it already has been. Uh, so after that share, I still say, eh, let's give it a shot. Convince them both that we should stay. Then the tune changed a little the very next day. And I was shown other things that she said. Joker's player came into our group chat saying, uh, I think we should just peace out, basically. And I was kind of confused. 
And then he said that the room controller didn't hold anything against Batman's player. Bats' player was like, oh yeah? And he was like, oh yeah, everything is CK's fault. Batsy said, beg your pardon? And Joker's player said, girl, I don't know what you did to piss her off, but everything stems back to you. Now, I did kind of unload a double-barreled dose of what would you do in her direction the previous night, which she stepped away from. See that exchange here? Again, if you want to read it, pause. Now, I did also say something about not really liking Wonder Woman's player all that much, but that I do my best not to let that affect my interactions with her, but I deleted it because, well, it really doesn't matter. It's None of my characters are likely to have much interaction with any of hers, so yeah. I removed it because it didn't need to be said. It shouldn't have been said. I said it, but I should have left it out. It was too much. There are a few reasons for it. Part of it is jealousy from the previous relationship that hasn't quite subsided. I'm cool with the breakup, but the hit to my self-worth that I got from the whole situation, especially the last few weeks, and just recently learning that I show signs of battered wife syndrome since one of my exes, yeah, I've got subscriptions. Now, there was a girl who was banned from this room who was a friend of Wonder Woman's player, and Wonder Woman's player told her that she would not play in that room because of it. However, she forgot and ended up doing it anyway, and I guess she threatened to back out after being reminded of it, unless the girl was unbanned. Hey, awesome backing your girl after your oops. Props. I got off topic. I was supposed to be showing a little bit about how all the drama is my fault. Well, here's that little tidbit of information. So yeah, I'm actually going to do this one in real time because I have commentary. I don't let my opinion of other players affect roleplay. In fact, I do my best to be pleasant with people I don't like out of character because I don't want to start things. I will say, those I am in a relationship with are a little different because relationships of all varieties have differing levels of drama and when adore you, hun, but when it takes a tactical nuke to point out something is wrong that needs to be dealt with, I heart him, but he is more than a little dense. And... I'm not the first person to say it, I won't likely be the last, and he admits it himself. Then there's this comment, making me look like a desperate, thirsty thought out for some other girl's man. Wench, I had options before he and I started dating. If we weren't together, I'd have likely been hanging out with a lot of other people. Anyway, that relationship is for another story time. Um, I play Lois Lane, Adeline, Harley, and Talia al Ghul. In none of these character stories will Wonder Woman's point of launch really matter to any of them. Unless she is playing it off like Lois and Diana have a friendship together, which after the New 52, I'm a lot less inclined to play, because fuck the New 52. <sighs> I'm surprised that didn't come up earlier. Anyway, what he said, I didn't insist. I was a bloody supportive girlfriend. I wanted to do World's Finest, which would have put them later in their careers, but no, he decided on wanting to start fresh, and I decided to back my boyfriend's preference. Color me fucked up. And no, the reason I did it is because, yes, I ship Lois and Clark, but mostly because Soups' player and I both wanted to, because we both ship Lois and Clark together. Well, fuck you two. See, my boys have my back. And if I weren't so dead set on staying in the room and playing with both Superman and Batman, we'd probably be gone. That is Batman's player, Joker's player, his girl, and I. Not to mention Batman's player's brother, who was an awesome role player way back when, has said thanks to the way she handled the stuff, he outright refuses to come in now. He's been retired and was thinking about coming back in. Oh well? I'd like to know where... I mean, short of the sitch I had with one of my exes back in 2013, I'll admit I could have handled that better. Don't let yourselves fall deep, darlings, because it can bring out a really ugly side to your personality. But again, that's another cautionary tale for another time. It wasn't even an hour. Over-dramatizing? And it only became bitching about halfway through. I mean, I provided the scripts, draw your own conclusion. The last comment is after a while of silence, and I just added that because... Yeah, it was her behavior as a room controller not being neutral. It caused him to feel like he was a little backed into a corner. Since then, I have taken a proactive part in getting things settled and everyone on the same page. Or I guess you could say I'm causing more drama. 
I got Superman's player and Batman's player to talking and asked Superman's player if he would so kindly explain to her that I am not some random thirsty thought chasing his ass around, quote, even though he's involved with Kansas, unquote, but had a bona fide reason for following him into play at the time and now. She didn't seem to be a big fan of that clarification, because supposedly her only response was, K. Anyway, Soup's and Batsy's players talked, seemed to get along fairly well, and were pretty much on the same page. I guess that works, since Batman actually asked me where Superman was starting from, since, well, they came out at about the same time, and they're actually rather closely tied. The Trinity is a modern thing in order to push Wonder Woman, who has had very little in the way of consistent writing. Seriously, compare the reboots of Wonder Woman to Batman or Superman as titles. Additionally, where Superman has, like, three titles associated with him, Man of Steel, Superman, and Action Comics, and Batman has Batman and Detective Comics, but he's also had, like, Batman Incorporated and things like that. Wonder Woman has Wonder Woman. The argument could be made that she has Sensation Comics, but when was the last time that was published? 1952. The only other character I can think of who's had more reboots of their main series who is a member of the core Justice League is Aquaman. Flash has had as many if you count the one year prior to Flashpoint. Fuck the new 52. The Trinity only started being a thing officially in 2003 and is mostly a modern age thing. It was usually World's Finest before, which is Batman and Superman, or the Justice League. More talking needs to be done. Superman's player is going to be talking to Wonder Woman's player, so hopefully they'll get on a page that Batman's player can agree with. Personally, I'd love to just stick all three of them in a Discord DM and have them hash it out until they come up with something solid to do and can be proposed to the room controller, with me just kind of being a comic book nerd fly on the wall since I probably know more about the general mythos and can offer suggestions uh, than any actual, you know, input. That said, I'm going to have my own little mediated conversation with the room controller. That was some dirty bull she was telling someone about me. Someone she apparently didn't know had my back to a degree. Hopefully it will go well. If not, well, I'm still willing to play. It's not like with my characters I have to interact with anyone who doesn't like me or I don't like. I won't refuse play, but I won't seek it out. I have enough play between Superman, Batman, Deathstroke, and Joker, not to mention all the stuff I need to plan for DC Noir. I gotta do space stuff. Badly. I need to finish doing my Queen of Fable storyline that I started last year, but is like herding cats because everyone has to have a different fairy tale. And then we have to get all together for the big boom, you know, take her out, put her in the tax code, something, I don't know. So, my first story time. I was hoping it wouldn't be such a dumpster fire. I was actually going to talk about how I got robbed twice. Maybe that'll be next time. I just had to get this out. There will be other roleplay related story times, but I wasn't planning on making the first time a roleplay story time. Remember kids, don't say anything about other people that you wouldn't say to their face, especially to other people. It's just not a good look. Also, always, always, Always make sure you have all the facts before you say anything. Research is your friend and communication is key. Here's my PSA for the year. (laughs) Anyway, thanks for listening and until next time, my darlings, have fun.